Signal is widely accepted as the most secure messaging app out there, used by military personnel, activists in authoritarian countries, and experts in information and data security. Its end-to-end -end encryption protocol is held as the standard by which others are measured. However, even the most secure apps have their holes, and Signal is no exception. From what I've been able to dig up, it seems that Signal has had about a dozen security vulnerabilities since 2014. I'll outline the most interesting ones here, and if you want a full write-up, check the description. In October of 2019, a researcher found that by using a modified client on their end, they could gain access to the microphone on a target's device by placing a signal audio call. The hacker's client would send a false connected status, which would make the target's phone act as if the call had been picked up turning on the microphone. However, this method only worked if the target didn't decline the call and it was allowed to keep ringing. To Signal's credit, they patched the issue within hours. 2018. October. It was discovered that Signal's desktop client stores a user's decryption key openly, unencrypted. During installation, the decryption key for a user is auto-generated and placed in a plain text file, making it an easy target for malware. A simple fix would be for users to create a password to generate a non-local encryption key, but in response, Signal said, the database key was never meant to be a secret, and that at-rest encryption was never something Signal Desktop was meant to provide. I'm sorry, but you what, mate? The entire premise of your app is to have foolproof encryption for the everyman, but then when it comes to the computer version, you just say, eh, figure it out, buddy, we have bigger fish to fry? This is one of those things that starts to raise an eyebrow from me. It's the kind of response you'd expect from WhatsApp, too busy integrating ads to fix glaring problems. But as you'll see from the rest of the list, Signal's desktop version has shown multiple vulnerabilities, most of which Signal has been pretty shrug shoulders about. Great, everything on my phone is airtight, but if I'm only as strong as my weakest link, it doesn't much matter how great the mobile app is if the desktop app looks like it was built out of Swiss cheese. As a nonprofit company that operates off grants and donations, why haven't they fixed it? If no one is breathing down their necks about quarterly projections and returns on investment, what's the excuse? You have one job signal. Do it. That same month, someone discovered that when upgrading from the original desktop version of Signal, a Chrome extension, to the standalone app that debuted in 2017, in order to transfer over the message history, the browser version exported the chat contents in simple plain text, unencrypted and unprotected. In May of 2018, two back-to-back -back discoveries unveiled code injection vulnerabilities. The first was a specially crafted link, and the second was a text message with malicious code. Both of these required no user interaction. Once more affecting the desktop version, allowing an attacker to instantly access your message history in plain text. The final May 2018 find was that Signal on macOS stores copies of the message text from previews in the user's notification center, kinda defeating that whole disappearing thing. A month earlier, a 17-year-old student in Italy found a way to completely bypass any passcode lock for Signal on iOS, assuming you had the actual device, by opening the app, closing the app, going to the home screen, and opening the app again. It was revealed that other sequences of gestures could produce a similar result, but this gives a whole new meaning to, have you tried turning it off and back on again? In September of 2016, a pair of vulnerabilities surfaced, one allowing someone to bypass Mac validation and add random data to attachments, and a second that would allow someone to remotely crash another user's signal client via a weakness in the code of the app's call audio manager. The final entries all technically apply to TextSecure, the encrypted text messaging app that merged with an encrypted call app, Redphone, to create Signal. In 2014, researchers found that you could retrieve a target's key generation and messaging password via TechSecure's encrypted export function, which created an encrypted copy of a user's message history and saved it on the device's internal storage, except for the password which was in an unencrypted XML file. This export function was later removed. 
And last, but perhaps the opposite of least, in 2015, a user on the Tech Secure forums suggested there be some sort of warning when creating group chats, announcing to the creator that by adding these users, it will allow them to immediately see each other's phone numbers. Despite several users agreeing that it's obviously a troublesome privacy problem, Moxie, the creator, replied, Thanks, but I don't think we're going to do this and closed the topic, stating, I have to decide which of these threads realistically represent work which we are going to do. If it's not work which we're going to do, I close the issue. And I have to say at least he stuck to his word. To this day, in May of 2020, Signal has no phone number privacy. I guess it's maybe a bit of mutually assured destruction, like mess with my phone number and I've got yours too, buddy, but implementing some type of secondary Signal username system wouldn't be that hard and would make a lot of sense on the app that's meant to be the most secure and most private. Googling ways to keep your primary phone number from being revealed on Signal has laughable results. Everything from buying a burner phone to using your work phone or your grandma's landline to get the one-time verification code and just riding it out until you switch devices or need to start over. When it comes to bugs, Signal has been quick to squash them. Most vulnerabilities vaporized within a couple days, if not hours of their discovery. However, when it comes to what they deem not bugs, but I guess features? Plain text passwords, publicly accessible phone numbers, and a far from airtight desktop client? Signal is completely complacent. They patched a call that could auto-connect and remotely enable someone's microphone, but anyone can add you to a group chat and suddenly dozens of people will have your phone number. You'll have no way to stop it. Isn't that kinda the same thing? Sure, they won't be able to hear my heavy breathing and chip crunching anymore while I watch Netflix and talk to my cat in a high-pitched baby voice, but they can still take my personal phone number and sign it up for every robocall telemarketer list known to man. I go to bat for Signal's encryption every time I can, but what I simply can't defend is their design philosophy. It does not feel like a democratic platform where users' requests are taken into consideration, but rather a benevolently encrypted dictatorship where you get what you get, or can kindly get the f*** out.